Okay, uh, welcome to uh, our drought case study video uh, for this edition. So we're looking at your two drought case study. Remember that drought is your second climatic uh, hazard case study. Tropical storms have been your first. There's another video available for that uh, on Katrina and Haiyan. And as with all videos, feel free to stop them at any point. It can be useful at this point if you want to pause and make sure you've got your case study booklet sat in front of you. Might make it easier to see some of the things that we are saying. Okay, so we're going to look at two uh, drought case studies. The first is for your MEDC, which is Australia. Uh, the drought known as uh, the Big Dry, which occurred in the states of Victoria and New South Wales during 2007. Bit of a specific place detail for you. Uh, the causes, and this is where it gets a little bit complex, so let's try and keep it simple with these four points. Okay, uh, it's due to a weather event called El Nino, and El Nino basically changes the winds that uh, come to and from Australia, okay? So instead of winds arriving in Australia that bring lots of rain, okay, uh, El Nino changes the weather pattern so that the winds blow from west to east instead, uh, and they bring with them very dry air, okay? Now, Australia had already been suffering droughts since 2005, so the El Nino effect, that changing wind pattern, made that even worse, okay? Uh, and Australia, to throw in a human impact, has the worst record for conserving water in their homes, okay? They use, and I suppose waste a lot of water in the use of like, uh, filling swimming pools, watering grass, and cleaning cars, okay? So remember those key causes. Uh, impacts, relatively straightforward. Water shortages and reservoirs are empty. Animals die of thirst and starvation. Uh, dry conditions led to bushfires, uh, which killed 180 people. Crops failed, as we were saying in one of our previous videos, so farmers lost their income, okay? Bit of place detail again then, mentioning El Nino in the cause, because that's specific to uh, Australia, 180 people dying from those bushfires, okay? And then in terms of prevention methods, uh, a lot of things there, drought tolerant crops were introduced, farmers given loans at low interest rates to help recover from the drought, insurance companies given to uh, pay bushfire victims, and then the bottom two, again specific place detail ideas, $10 billion uh, invested, $10 billion Australian dollars invested in a national plan for water security to improve water management on the uh, Murray-Darling River Basin. So basically get more water and manage it more effectively out the river. And then Melbourne's uh, desalination plan removes salt from 150 billion good fat litres of seawater. Okay, so that's our MEDC case study. Um, and we can use that. It's a really good question for something like, let's just bring the mouse into play. There we go. Okay. Okay. Uh, describe the methods used to protect people and property from this climatic hazard and explain how sustainable these methods are. Okay, So we just used our uh, folder here, our publisher file here, we've looked at the prevention methods okay, and then be able to say how sustainable they are. Can you consistently invest $10 billion? On water management, probably not. So that's not very economically sustainable, okay? Can you continue to buy drought tolerant crops? Again, that's less economically sustainable, okay? As is insurance companies. Hotlines offering advice on saving water, relatively sustainable. Cheap, easy to run, uh, easy for people to follow. Uh, again, water restrictions introduced for homeowners, relatively sustainable, relatively straightforward to do, okay? Because obviously you are only monitoring the water that people use, you're encouraging people to save water. So very useful this case study for questions that ask you about um, the methods used um, to protect people and property and how sustainable they are, okay? You can, of course, use it for questions like this. Explain the natural process causing the hazard and describe its impact on people in the area. Everybody's favourite. It's just simple cause and effect. And at this point, it's useful to note that this question, explain the natural process is causing the hazard and describe its impact on people and property, is almost the same as this question. Describe the climatic conditions, okay? Because they're the same thing, yes? So natural processes, El Nino, wind change, etc., etc. Climatic conditions, El Nino, wind change, dry conditions, etc., etc. Okay? So Australia works very well for either of those types of questions, as does 
your second case study. Now, again, on, in your case study booklet, you'll find your publisher version of this. I've just got it as a bit of a Word document, just to skim through, really. Okay, Your LEDC uh, location is Kenya in Africa, where drought occurred between 2007 and 2009. And you'll be able to talk about the causes, so thousands of trees being cut down in Kenya's Mao Forest, Good place detail. Uh, once trees are removed, that's deforestation, then less evapotranspiration. And as we were talking about in the drought theory video, uh, therefore there's less moisture in the atmosphere and less condensation, less clouds, so less rain falls. Okay? That uh, decrease in rainfall caused the uh, Njoro River to dry up, been practicing that, uh, meaning that farmers then couldn't use that water to irrigate their crops, okay, and then those high temperatures dry up the farmland and uh, combined with the failure of the rainy season, a result of climate change, means that fewer crops for sale overseas and within Kenya. In blue, you should be able to spot the impacts. Food prices have fought, risen by 130%. Hundreds of animals have died due to a lack of water and food, including wildebeest and zebra. Get that in, specific place detail. 19 million people have suffered from a shortage of water. Diseases spread quickly, and so on and so forth. And then you'll have this on your version, just down the bottom, what has been done. Okay, uh, Water Aid, the charity is focused on providing clean water. Uh, countries such as the UK have given 15 million in aid. Uh, the Kenya the Kenyan government has tried to give compensation to people who lost their animals. They pump water out of boreholes in the ground uh, and have banned crop growing in the Mao Forest area to try and limit the need for water to be irrigated onto land there. Okay? Again, you can look at and make sure you revise all of these details for both your LEDC hazard Australia and your LEDC hazard uh, Kenya. Again, Kenya is suitable for both questions. Obviously, be wary that this one says name the MEDC. DC, so you'd have to use Australia in that case. If it said name the LEDC, then Kenya is a perfect example for a climatic hazard if you're going to talk about drought. Okay. Uh, again, the methods used to protect people and property, how sustainable they are, perhaps because it's an LEDC, a little bit more sustainable in that it's lower cost, maybe more environmentally friendly. Kenya works uh, perfectly well, especially for that, name and locate an example of a climatic hazard in an LEDC, natural processes, talk about that, the reasons why drought occurs and what's made it worse in Kenya and its impact on people. Okay, so that's been this video about your drought case studies.